Hello once again, Cyrus54 here with another educational video. This time we're going to be covering big block Chevy distributors. And as always, I will be covering all the topics included with the installation with this thing. Whether you're a seasoned pro or whether you're somebody doing this for the first time, I will be trying to cover all the topics. So this is your typical big block Chevy. You have the front of the engine with the pulleys and the water pump. And on the back you have the distributor. Top half, that'd be this black plastic piece, this is the distributor cap. This little spinning piece in the middle is the rotor. This little weird looking cone shaped thing on the side, this is for your vacuum advance, which will be getting hooked up to the carburetor. One of the first problems I was running into when I was trying to reassemble one of these after I had just bought a brand new one and I was trying to put it into my engine was I had my cap. This specifically is an HEI distributor. It has the coil built into the top of it. When I was trying to reassemble this thing, I was checking all over this thing for numbers, trying to find out which one goes to the number one cylinder, which one goes to the three, to the eight. There's nothing written on here. The reason for that is because you can hook this up however you want. Now before we try to install this into the engine, we have to do something that's very important called finding top dead center. A lot of people, when they say that phrase, they omit one very important part. You don't just want to find top dead center, you want to find top dead center on the compression stroke. Best way to do that is to find your number one cylinder. Which one's the number one cylinder? Well, very simply, this is the number one cylinder on the, what we will refer to as the driver's side. A lot of people like to refer to it as the left side, the right side, well, that gets confusing. So, since I'm using an American vehicle here, I'm going to be referring to this as the driver's side of the engine. On the driver's side of the engine, you have your oddly numbered cylinders. One, three, five, seven. On the passenger side of the engine, you're going to have the even numbered cylinders. Two, four, six, eight. Now there are many ways to find top dead center. Some people prefer the old grab a wrench, put a socket on it, put it on that nut in the middle, and just start torquing the engine over. I don't like this particular method because it risks you could snap that bolt and then you're going to have a whole new set of problems. Personally for me, I like to install the starter and use a remote starter switch. Now in my particular case, I do not have a battery set up for this thing. So what I'm going to use is a battery charger slash jump box. Take my negative, that would be the black. Put it anywhere on the block, or even down here, attach it to the bolt on the starter. Take the positive, and put it Now we grab one end of our remote starter. We're going to put it on our positive. We're going to take the other end of our remote starter. We're going to attach it to this little clip down here. Depending on your starter configuration, the model number, all that, you might have to set it up differently. You might have to run a jumper wire. So before we attempt to turn the engine over, we have to come down here to our number one cylinder spark plug. We're going to need to remove this. Assuming that your harmonic balancer is properly tuned, this little line that's on here, as it rotates around, when it hits this little mark of zero, that'll be top dead center. Now whether or not it's top dead center on the compression stroke is another matter. How we're going to find top dead center on the compression stroke, there's several ways you can do it. One, you can take a screwdriver and stick it into the spark plug hole. Not recommended because you do have moving components in there that can collide with this and something can get damaged. Option two, you could take your thumb and plug that little hole. You're going to feel a vacuum 
on one stroke and then you're going to feel pressure pushing out on another stroke. That's what you want. As soon as you feel pressure pushing out, that is the compression stroke. That's what you want. There is a third option for finding the compression stroke. That is to get a compression test kit. It comes with a little pressure gauge. You can thread this into your spark plug hole hook up this little pressure gauge and as soon as that needle starts to move as your engine is turning then you have the compression stroke. The easiest and safest way to do it. So I cranked the engine over until this thing started to show a little bit of pressure which means we are on the compression stroke. We put our spark plug back in Torque specs for a spark plug is about 20 foot-pounds. Now comes a little bit of a tricky part. Trying to install the distributor into the intake. Way down in there is our oil pump. It's going to have a little slot in it and I have to fit this little tab into that little slot. Don't forget that when you put the distributor in, you're going to want your little oil seal so that you're not spewing oil all over the place. You're going to need to remove the distributor cap for the thing that we're going to be doing next. All you need is a screwdriver for these spring-loaded little screw things here. There are four of them. Now here, standing in the back of the engine, here is the flex plate. You're going to need to adjust your distributor, picking it up and setting it down, remembering that that little tab down there has to fit precisely. Ooh, I believe we almost got it right there. There are only three important things we have to remember while installing the distributor. One. When it's installed at top dead center on the compression stroke, we need to make sure that the distributor cap, imagine an imaginary line going through here, is pointing at the number one cylinder, or at least in the general vicinity. You can always fine tune everything a little bit later, but as long as it's pointing somewhat toward this corner of the engine, on the front here, on the driver's side, as long as you got it pointed somewhere over in this vicinity, you should be pretty good. Two. You want to make sure that it's sitting flush. Sometimes when you install these things, they want to stick up a little bit. You want to make sure it is making contact with your washer, your little oil plug there, and making sure that that is pushed firmly down on top of your intake. The third thing that you want to remember is that if this isn't sitting all the way down, that means it probably didn't make flush contact with the oil pump that's down there and that little tab did not fit into that top of that rod. So you might have to pick it up and adjust it a few times. There it's not wanting to go down. So this is the distributor cap. It has a little tab on here that has to go in a specific spot. This little tab right here has to fit into this little slot here. Before tightening down these little screws you want to make sure that your distributor cap is sitting on there somewhat level. Now you just take your screwdriver and push down these little spring-loaded bent screws. I don't know what exactly they're called. Make sure they hook on the underside. On top of the distributor cap, you will notice that there is three separate little plugs. 
these three exposed tabs right here, these little spade connectors, they go to the base of the distributor, which would be this connector here. The way I run this, I run the tack that goes to the tachometer or the RPM gauge, tells you how fast the engine is turning. The battery side, however, I typically just like to run this thing to a little toggle switch coming off of the positive side of the battery. This allows you to have a little, you know, kill switch hidden somewhere inside the vehicle in case anybody wants to try to steal your car. After everything else is all said and done, we move on to our distributor clamp tie down. You want to make sure that this little bracket is snug pushing down on your distributor. I have had these things having so much torque and power that they will actually start to move the distributor as you're driving. This screws up your firing sequence, it makes it hard to start the engine, etc, etc. When tightening down your distributor, this is typically the install that you'll see. You'll see a little square pattern here. Straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line of your spark plug studs. You'll see your vacuum advance sitting off at an angle. This is typically the install that you'll see most people running with, so this is the one that we're going to go with for now. Then you go digging around, you find all your spark plug wires, and here's how you're going to set them up. This is the front of the engine, this is the back of the engine. Here's how your distributor plug should look. 1843653. This is the firing order for big blocks and small blocks. When I purchased my spark plug wires, I made sure that I also got one of these little plastic clip-on kits. These have little numbers on them so that you can clip them onto your spark plug wires so that you know which wire is supposed to go to which plug. Once again, 1843-6572. So here we have number one to the number one cylinder. This is your last opportunity to make sure that you've got everything hooked up right. One, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight. Make sure they're all hooked up to their corresponding terminals on top of the distributor cap. If you don't hook these up right, I foresee two possibilities, things that I've personally witnessed will happen. One the engine just won't start at all. Option two, the engine will backfire through the carburetor. Now this is the most basic part of engine mechanics. You need to remember a simple little test if your engine is not running. Fuel, air, spark, test. With these three components, this is what is required for your engine to run. Your fuel coming into your engine, the air coming into the engine, and the spark. In my case, I am running from my battery on my distributor post, coming down and over, this is just a temporary setup, down to the positive side of my starter. That's going to take the electricity that's coming into the engine, into the coil, it's going to amplify it using that coil, and it's going to produce enough electricity, enough spark, to go into the spark plugs. If you don't have fuel, if you don't have air and spark, your engine is not going to run. Assuming, of course, it is mechanically sound. I mean, if you've got bad valves, if you got a bent crank, a cracked block, all that stuff will stop it from running. Don't get me wrong. But you do need three main things to make sure it runs. Fuel, air, and spark. So, assuming everything was done correctly, all this thing should need is a splash of gas. Now, I don't have to worry about this thing running for a long period of time because it's only going to burn through that gas in about maybe half a second, so I don't need my fuel lines hooked up, I don't need my coolant system, I don't even need headers, and this thing will shoot flames, so be ready for that. So you might want to make sure that you're prepared for just such a scenario because I have had gasoline that was on fire come spraying up out of the top of the carburetor. So my main issue here is that I just recently put in some new piston rings and they haven't been broken in yet. 
So it's really hard for the starter, even though it's a high torque mini starter, it's really hard for it to turn the engine over. 800 cranking amp new battery. These tiny little cables just aren't rated for that much power. You got scoring going on there. And the negative, these things are warm. Started to weld. But anyway, I hope this has been educational enough for you. You are on the right track if you've made it this far. If you can get the engine to at least pop and start smoking out of the exhaust, well, it's only a little bit further to go and then you got this thing running. Now the great thing about this thing not firing up the first time I tried it is it proves to you, one, that I'm not lying to you or being deceitful in any way, trying to say, oh yeah, it cranked up first time, yeah, check that shit out, I'm so awesome. Two, it gives me the opportunity to try and diagnose why it didn't start. And for that, I'm suspecting that maybe I put the distributor in and I'm just one tooth off. What that means is that little shaft that's going down there into the oil pump, it has a gear ring that's on it that makes contact with the camshaft. I believe that maybe when I put that in there, I might have been one tooth either too far forward or one tooth too far back. Now I think it's one tooth too far back, which means I have a couple of different options here. I can either try to pick the distributor up and try to fiddle around with it back and forth and hope that I get it back in there flush against the intake. Or you could do what I'm going to do and that's just going to be to loosen up the distributor tie down with the 916 wrench and then just twist the distributor cap back and forth. So here's the front of the engine, here's the back of the engine, here's your distributor cap. If you rotate it clockwise, this is known as advancing the distributor. If you rotate it counterclockwise, it will be retarding the distributor. I believe that my distributor cap is one tooth off going backwards, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to advance the distributor cap. The engine was sort of trying to fire, so I believe if I either retard it or advance it just enough, this thing should fire. Okay, so after some tinkering with this thing, I've got my battery mounted down here now. I'm using my cables that I'm actually going to be using when I have this thing assembled. These are, I can't remember if they're 2 gauge or 0 gauge, but they are very, very thick. I've also upgraded the thickness of the wire that I'm using going to the coil, to the battery post of the coil on the uh, HEI distributor. This is 10 gauge. So with everything, this should fire now. We have power. Okay, so I've advanced the distributor cap just a little bit. Going to advance it just a little bit more. So it will require a little bit of tuning and everything, but I have got it to the firing position, so... Finally, as far as I'm concerned, I'm done. Hope this has been educational for you guys.